All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome to another exciting episode of D&D Did a Deep Dive, the show where we dive deep into classes, subclasses, and other features of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons to help you get the most out of your choices. So, today, we uh, finished up all the exclusive uh, classes in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. And now we're shifting back to Xanathar's Guide, which is kind of how this little mini-series has started. Uh, because I wanted to do some Rogue subclasses, both the Rogue subclasses in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Um, were reprinted in Xanathar, so we did all the Xanathar Rogue uh, subclasses. And now, uh, the one uh, Sorcerer subclass in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide was reprinted in Xanathar's, the Storm Sorcerer, plus there's two more in there that we haven't did it done. Um, so I'm going to start with those, and I'm actually going to start with the Divine Soul Sorcerer. Um, so first things first, just like every one of these, I'm going to start with some, uh, uh, refresher on fifth edition Giga class design. Basically, uh, in fifth edition, every class is designed to play very, very differently right from the b -b beginning. In order to d -d do that, they have these things that we call defining features. And in order to be a d -d -d defining feature, it has to show up within the first two levels. Um, now, the Sorcerer is a really, really good, good example of the uh, idea that just because uh, a defining feature shows up at, uh, uh, or just because the kind of most uh, unique aspect of a defining feature shows up after second level doesn't mean it's not a d -d -d defining feature. Um, and uh, for sorcerers themselves, uh, first things first, uh, they do choose their subclass at f f first level. Um, so that is going to kind of change how uh, you play the game right from the b beginning. Uh, because each one of these subclasses makes changes. The Divine Soul that we're going to talk about today makes massive changes. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, however, the big defining feature for the sorcerer actually comes at second level and it's called font of magic basically what this does is it gives you a pool of sorcery points now these sorcery points can be used for a lot of different things um at second level the only thing you can use them for uh is you can use uh sorcery points and you can turn them into spell slots or you can take spell slots burn them and turn them into sorcery points um so they give you what's called flexible casting which basically means you can convert uh, s uh, spell slots uh, from one level to, to, to another uh, with diminishing r r returns. Uh, uh, so it's it's not like you can change a first level uh, spell slot into a, a second level one. What happens is if you uh, burn a first level spell slot, you get two sorcery points. If you want to create a first level spell slot, you would use two sorcery points to make it. A second level uh, spell slot uh, costs three and gives you three. Third level is five. Fourth level is six. And fifth level is seventh. Uh, and above fifth level, you can't use uh, flexible casting to create um, uh, new spell slots or any th 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 things uh, la 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 like that. Uh, so first through fifth uh, are kind of this is the same thing. You can take a first and a second level s -s spell slot uh, and turn them into a third level s -s spell slot. Or you can take a fourth level spell slot and turn it into two second level s -s spell slots. So the sorcerer is built around the idea that they are uh, an innate spellcaster. Their spellcasting of ability actually comes from their blood, from their lineage. That's why all their s -s subclasses are called their... Uh, sorceress origins. That's where they get this p -p power from. Um, and because of that, uh, they are very, very, um, uh, I don't want to say customizable because it's not that, that, that. Uh, they're, they're, they're very, very kind of go with the flow 
uh, they're a very go with the flow kind of cookie class. Uh, they're a very adaptable. There we go. Very ad adaptable class uh, because uh, depending on what spells they have pre pre prepared and what they need to cast, uh, they can make sure they have the spell slots they need to do what they need. And then at third level, uh, again, technically not a defining FIFA feature, but uh, it expands a defining feature uh, in that uh, third level you get uh, what's called meta magic, which is uh, a defining feature of the sorcerer since it was first introduced. Um, and meta magic basically lets them manipulate their spells as they're casting them. Um, uh, sometimes you can twin a spell so it hits two targets instead of one, or you can quicken a spell so you can cast it as a b -b 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 bonus action. Um, uh, there's a bunch of other things. You can increase the distance of this as a spell. Um, you can do a thing called careful uh, spell, um, which uh, means uh, uh, whoever, uh, whomever you cho cho choose uh, automatically saves against this as a spell. Uh, stuff like that. So it, it is designed to uh, help the uh, sorcerer become even that much more adaptable. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's really the big defining feature of the s -S Sorcerer is their uh, sorcery points. Uh, normally, uh, m most classes have like two at least. Some of them have th three. Uh, but uh, the, s uh, the sorcery points um, have such a massive effect on how you play the class that they really don't need a another... Uh, they really did, don't need another d d defining feature. That makes them unique enough on the, the, their own. Um, so let's actually dive into the Divine Soul itself. Now, um, the interesting thing about the d d d Divine Soul um, is the Divine Soul is the 5th edition version uh, of a class uh, known as the Favored Soul that showed up in 3.55. So basically the second half of uh, the 3rd edition. And the unique thing about uh, the the, the um, favored soul was how it cast its m -m magic. Uh, back in th the third edition, when you prepared spells, you would prepare a specific spell in a specific slot. So let's say you were a k -k cleric and you had uh, uh, k -k cure runes and uh, k -k cause runes, two very very common low level s -s spells. So uh, and you have four first level s -s spell slots. What you would do is when you were preparing spells uh, at the uh, uh, beginning of the d -d day, you would go, okay, I'm going to per um, I'm going to pre 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 prepare two. Um, I'm going to pre pre prepare two cure wounds, and I'm going to prepare two cause wounds. And then as you're uh, uh, adventuring, you are limited to those two cure wounds and two cause wounds unless you prepare spells again by camping and everything like that so, so um if you were going through a dungeon and you used up both of your cookie cure wounds it wouldn't matter if your party needed another heal you simply didn't have it the favored soul on the other hand uh was very similar to a uh sorcerer at that point where they had spell slots and they had spells that they knew and whenever they would cast a spell they would just pick a spell slot to use for that s -s spell uh basically very very similar to how fifth edition s -s spell casting works and that's what made the favored soul so unique is they were an innate uh divine spell caster um and the class itself had some uh, positives and negatives so that it wasn't just, you know, uh, a cleric that didn't have to prepare spells or anything like they they got kind of complicated. But the lore around it was they uh, were blessed by a g -g god or perhaps they had some sort of uh, uh, sacred uh, uh, or um, fiendish uh, uh, heritage uh, that somehow gave them the ability uh, to interact with the d -d divine magic innately. Whereas clerics had to pray and they had to uh, have very, very strong faith in order to be able to use d -d -d divine magic. Um, and because of that, I've always thought divine our uh, uh, favored souls were really, really cool cuckoo classes. I actually played a favored soul uh, in Dungeon and Dragons Online, uh, which was an MMO. It, it still is. It still exists. Uh, that's based on 3.55. Um and uh, they're they're just really really cool. I never really enjoyed uh, the old 
version of Sissa spell casting where you had to choose specific slots for Sissa specific spells. Uh, and the uh, uh, favorite soul, let me do that. So the Divine Soul is the 5th edition version of that. And because um, all 5th edition cookie casters uh, cast the way a favorite soul used to in the 3rd edition, you have to make some, some ch -ch changes. Um, so uh, first things first. Uh, at first level, when you choose the Divine Soul Origin, uh, you get two things. You get uh, the first one you get is Divine Magic, uh, and this is the thing that massively, massively changes how you play uh, the, the, this sorcerer. When your spell casting feature lets you learn or replace a sorcerer cantrip or a sorcerer spell of first level or ha -ha higher, you can choose the new spell from the cleric spell list or the sorcerer's assist spell list. You must otherwise obey all restrictions for selecting the spells, and it becomes a sorcerer spell for you. Uh, in addition, choose an affinity for the source of your divine power. Good, evil, law, k -k 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 chaos, or neutrality. You learn an additional spell based on that affinity as shown below. It is a sorcerer spell for you, but it doesn't count against your number of sorcerer spells known. If you later replace this spell, you must replace it with a spell from the cleric spell list. So, first things first, divine soul sorcerers get access to the entire k -k cleric spell list and the Sorcerer spell list. We talked about the Arcana Domain Cleric as being really, really interesting because they could take some wizard spells and or some arcane spells and use them while combining them with uh, the divine uh, uh, magic uh, and divine casting. Well, this is the other side. Uh, sorcerers are arcane spellcasters. They get access to almost as many spells uh, as the wizard as far as spells that they can choose from. It's not the entire wizard spell list, but it's a pretty large of a part. Um, but now this sorcerer gets all the divine spells. Uh, and some of the divine spells that people always, always undervaluable, because when they think of divine spells, they think of healing spells. Uh, which is great. And you can create a really, really cool um, healing sorcerer with this, which can be massively useful. Being able to cast Cure Wounds as a bonus action and then fire off a cantrip and still be able to do, uh, uh, you know, cool uh, spellcasty attacking stuff is massively useful. However, there are some insanely powerful cleric attack spells that tend to get overlooked because the clerics are generally trying to keep their puppet party alive um and one of my favorite ones because nobody ever th th thinks about it uh is um uh, i think it's uh inflict wounds or cause wounds something similar uh to, 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 to that i'm looking it up right now so i i don't call it the wrong n -n 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 name um Inflict wounds is what it's called in fifth, fifth edition. Uh, it's been it's been called a, b a bunch of everything's over the uh, uh, over the years. Uh, but it's a, a classic spell. But it, it's again, it's a spell that uh, a lot of clerics they they may have it as a spell that they no no no, but they very rarely use it because they're always using uh, their healing spells or other th th things because they're kind of viewed as a s -s support class. Um, Inflict wound is a first level spell. Um, it's a touch spell, so you do have to get pretty close. Uh, but as we talk about this as a sorcerer, you'll find out it's not that big a deal for them to g -g get close. Um, and you make a melee spell attack against a creature you can reach. On a hit, the target takes 3d10 necrotic damage with a first level spell. That's a pretty decent chunk of d -d damage. And then when you cast a spell slot using a second level or higher, the damage increases by 1d10 for each slot above f -f first. So already that's p -p pretty good, but there's something that people forget about with f -f afflict wounds, which is you make a melee spell attack against a creature in reach, which means you make an att attack roll, which means you can crit with this spell. Unlike a lot of other really p -p powerful spells where they're saving throws and there's no way to crit, uh, inflict wounds you can cook a crit with and when you're casting it at high levels like even just going up to third level it's 5d 10 to the damage at third level 
if you get a crit on it, that's 10d10 damage for a level 5 character. A level 5 character that can do 100 damage if you were to find a way to maximize your damage on that. That's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, and it's one of my favorite Kika Cleric spells. And it is exclusive to the Cleric and the Oathbreaker Peppa Paladin, which the Oathbreaker uh, is not supposed to be uh, a player character subclass. It's designed to, to, to be uh, an NPC subclass, specifically for an evil NPCs. So the fact that uh, this sorcerer can quicken this spell because it, it's allowed to cook a quicken, or you could twin the spell if you have two people within range and just go, um, uh, because this qualifies for both of the, 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 the those uh, things, uh, and then just do crazy amounts of the, the damage with it. And if you have maybe uh, a divination wizard uh, that happens to have a nat 20 on them, you go, hey, give me the nat to the 20. Okay, uh, I'm going uh, to cast this at 7th le le level, uh, which would turn it to 10d10 damage. And it's, oh, look! I crit! It's 20d10 damage. Uh, it's just incredible. That's uh, average damage for 20d10 is 120 damage. Um, and again, as a sorcerer, you could quicken it and then cast a cantrip, uh, then make a weapon attack if, 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 if you had uh, the, 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 that. Um, uh, there's actually a, a, a spell called Shadow Blade that the sorcerers get uh, that give you a really, really powerful, you know, weapon. Uh, so you could inflict wounds with your bonus action, come back with your Shadow Blade, and just murder. Um, and that's just a first level cleric spell. There are tons of really amazing cleric uh, cleric only spells. And again, a lot of them are um, uh, healing spells. But things like spiritual weapon, super, super uh, uh, useful um, because it doesn't require... Uh, um, it doesn't require concentration. So, so you can effectively cast a spiritual weapon as a b -b 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 bonus action, um, uh, cast uh, a cantrip uh, as your regular action, then every turn after that, you have an automatic bonus action that's dealing d -d 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 damage. Um, some of the other ones is uh, clerics get some pretty interesting um, summon spells. All right, I have to mention spirit guardians. Uh, if you don't mind using your concentration on spirit guardians, basically you get to walk around and just murderize anyone that uh, is within uh, 15 feet of you uh, using spirit guardians. So combining spirit guardians with maybe giving uh, the sorcerer a... a, a, a uh, a melee weapon, uh, because sorcerers are, uh, for the most part, single attribute d -d -d dependent uh, class, uh, so they really only need their charisma to do everything. Um, so giving them a pretty decent dexterity score could mean that they could walk around with a dagger or uh, if they uh, uh, use a feat to get access to uh, maybe a martial uh, finesse w w weapon, they could go around with spirit guardians as their constant titration spell and make uh, attacks, maybe have um, uh, spiritual weapon on there for their b -b bonus actions, or um, they could j j just be using inflict wounds um, as their spirit guardians are are, are just churning up uh, around them. There's just so many different things you can do, do with it. Uh, and then as you get to um, uh, higher levels, uh, they do get uh, a couple of the interesting um, uh, summon spells, like uh, summon celestial. Uh, it's a it's a, a cleric only. Uh, or cleric and paladin only s -s spell. Uh, though with paladins, because it's a fifth level s -s spell, um, they they don't get it until they're pretty f -f far uh, into the uh, game. Whereas uh, a sorcerer, a divine soul s -s sorcerer, would get it, I think, fifth level spells around like level nine or to ten. Um, I have the class in f -f front of me. I could tell you. Uh, ninth level uh, uh, is when you get f f fifth level spells. So yeah, and that's uh, again, it's your concentration. But for an hour, you have this minion uh, that does a remarkable amount of damage. It can heal as w w w w w well, though only once uh, per, per, per day. Um, and uh, yeah, just I mean, there's so many cool things you can do with the ability uh, to cast both arcane and divine m m magic. 
Um, the other half of that, I know we've been talking about this a while, but it's such a big deal. Um, the spells that you get, uh, if you're good aligned, it's cure wounds. Evil, it's inflict wounds. Remember, I said inflict wounds, super cool. Uh, if you're lawful, it's bless. Bless is another one that's super, super useful, but a ton of clerics use it. So it's not quite as b -b breaking. But basically, uh, all your attack rolls and... Uh, uh, saving throws, you add a d4 to them. Bane is the exact opposite, and then neutrality is protection from good, 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 good and evil. All of those are very useful spells that you just get added to uh, your uh, uh, stuff. So, yeah. Uh, let's continue on uh, just first level uh, and go favored by the gods. Um, if you fail a saving throw or miss with an attack roll, you can roll 2d4 and add it to the total possibly changing the outcome once you use this feature you can't use again until you finish a short or long rest uh so this is another one that uh, again i'm generally not a huge fan of one and did it done but uh it's only a short rest versus a a, a a a long rest so it's not quite as bad and again when you're combining this with something like inflict wounds where if you miss with it you waste the spell slot this can mean the difference between wasting a six level inflict wounds on s -s someone or uh, hitting with it, because 2d4 a, a effectively up to a plus 8 on uh, your, your, your uh, attack roll is pretty freaking um, amazing. And even if you can only use it once, I can see that definitely being used a fair um, um, amount to ensure that when you are casting the, the, those uh, cleric spells or sorcerer spells that you really need to land, uh, you do. Um, or again, uh, those situations where you need to make your s -s saving throw. Uh, the nice thing about it being 2d4 instead of 1d8 uh, is minimum you can roll on 2d4 is 2, no, 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 not 1. So bare minimum, you will always roll at least 2 using favored of the g -g -g or favored by the g -g gods. So, All right, so 6th level, you get empowered healing. Whenever you or an ally within five feet of you rolls dice to determine the number of hit points a spell restores, you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll any number of those dice once, provided you aren't incapacitated. You can use this feature only once uh, per, 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 per turn. Uh, so this gives you another use for your sorcery points. Uh, and again, because you are uh, a hybrid divine arcane caster, healing is still going to be a big thing you can do. Especially since, again, with your quicken spell... Um, or your twin spell, um, it means you can uh, heal a, a lot faster um, and a little bit more f effectively than most clerics, simply because uh, as long as you have two characters that are near each other, you can cure wounds two characters with a uh, twin spell. Um, or you can cure wounds uh, as a bonus action y -y 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 using um, quicken s -s spell. Um, and so with empowered healing, it, it just kind of ensures that you're, you're not wasting a heal. And it's like, oh, look, you get six hit points. Yay. Um, now because it's only one die, uh, for the higher level, uh, kick cures that you're doing, it's, it's not going to be as effective, but still fairly useful. Um, at 14th level, uh, you get otherworldly wings. Uh, which really did a deals with mobility in an interesting way. Uh, starting at 14th level, you can use a b -b bonus action to manifest a pair of spectral wings from your back. While the wings are present, you have a flying speed of 30 feet. The wings last until you're incapacitated, you die, or you dismiss them as a bonus action. Uh, the affinity you choose for your divine magic feature determines the appearance of these spectral wings. Eagle wings for good or law, bat wings for evil or kick of chaos, and dragonfly wings for n -n -n neutrality. You get wings! Oh, so cool! Especially since, again, if you start combining some of those cleric abilities, like... Um, spirit g -g Guardians. If you fly into the air and you make sure that you're about 10 feet above the Giga ground, uh, because the radius is 15 feet, you can hit a lot of people on the ground and be just outside of melee range and just rain down da -da 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 damage. Uh, the other thing it gives you is the ability to go over enemies to get to enemies that you need to get close to if you are using things like Inflict Wounds or sh -sh Shadow Blade or anything th 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 like that. Um... So, uh, yeah, it's...
flying speeds are always useful. And the fact that there is no limitation to this, you just use a bonus action, you get to keep the wings until you don't want them anymore, um, makes this an incredibly useful thing. Uh, it turns this sorcerer into a, a, a an avenging angel, uh, uh, almost. Um, where uh, they're very rarely going to have issues with mobility ever. Like, unless you're underwater... Uh, this sorcerer is going to be able to go anywhere, get out of most situations that are b -b 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 bad, uh, just really, really y -y 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 useful. Um, so yeah, there's not much more to say ab -b about it other than cool. Uh, and then finally, at 18th level, you get Unearthly Recovery. As a bonus action, when you have fewer than half your hit points remaining... You can regain a number of hit points equal to half your hit point maximum. Let me say that again. You can regain a number of hit points equal to half your hit point m -m -m maximum. And once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a little long rest. Um, I have mentioned I'm not a huge fan of one and done uh, long rest of abilities because players don't use them. So they need to be sufficiently powerful so that they feel good when you use them. This is one of those abilities. Um, I have no problem with this being a one and done because it's a massively useful. Um, first of all, it's a bonus action. So you still get to do your action with whatever you want to, 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 to do with it. That's a big deal. Second of all, uh, it requires you to be uh, at least uh, fewer than half of your hit points. But it gives you half. So theoretically, you could dump, uh, you could dip one under half your hit point maximum use this unearthly recovery and be one hit point away from full health instantly just a b -b bonus action and you get it that again makes this a very durable uh uh s -s sorcerer not only can they heal themselves because they have access to all the d -d -d divine magic but they have this unearthly recovery they don't even have to use a s -s spell slot to heal themselves no 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 they can do whatever they n -n 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 need to um, and yeah, just do really, really awesome, uh, uh, stuff with that. Um, so final thoughts, um, overall, again, I'm, I'm slightly biased because I really liked favored souls in earlier editions. I thought they were such a cool idea for a class. And I think this kind of goes to show you just how well designed Xanathar's subclasses are. Because there isn't an aspect of this uh, subclass that isn't cool. That isn't something I'm like, hey, I really l l l like this. Even the things I normally did don't like, um, I, I have no issue with. Uh, the divine magic uh, thing is massive. Uh, your a divine soul, a divine soul sorcerer is one of the most unique classes in the game, uh, and just the weird synergies that you can put put together, like maybe giving yourself holy weapon, um, and then um, uh, going around uh, with uh, your spiritual weapon and just going through and meleeing people to death with divine justice. You can go that route. Uh, or again, uh, using spiritual weapon and shadow b -b 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 blade. Or again, turning on spirit g -g guardians and then nuking people uh, uh, w -w -w with inflict wounds and uh, flying around while you d -d 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 do it or casting fireball. And like, there's so many cool combinations uh, of divine and arcane spells that you just get to do. Um, favored by the gods is super useful uh, 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 again. Uh, e even though it's a one and done thing, um, because it's uh, a short rest one and done, uh, it's not even that limiting, and it will definitely help you when you need those saves or you need those attacks. Uh, empowered healing, I think, is probably the weakest uh, for the thing of this, and it's still really useful. Um, which just goes to show you just what a great subclass this is. Otherworldly Wings is just amazing. You can fly around. Uh, you can do cool stuff. Uh, and then Unearthly Recovery uh, makes this sorcerer remarkably hard to, 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 to kill and incredibly dangerous when you are trying to kill it because it doesn't even have to use its action uh, to uh, heal itself. It can use a bonus action and then cast a leveled spell to decimate you afterwards. Um, overall, I really, really like it. I think it's such a cool, interesting uh, cook a class. 
uh, subclass uh, for a cool uh, class. Like the sorcerer is a really unique, fun class to pop a play. Anyway, uh, that is going to be all for me today. As always, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, turn notifications on so you never miss any of the episodes of this. In the comments down below, what is the coolest combination of divine and arcane magic you can th th think of? Um, whether it's uh, a concentration spell and uh, uh, a non-concentration spell, uh, whether it's uh, just you know combining spell effects on alternate turns or things like that, what is the coolest divine arcane combo you could see being used by divine soul sorcerer? Put it in the kick of comments. Otherwise, again, that's all for, for, for me today, and I will see you guys in the next time. All right, bye bye.